Uh, Tuesday episode. 20, today is 22nd day of August 2023 and we're so delighted to be here again today. I do hope you had a wonderful night rest, God willing. We also had a nice rest last night. Thank you so much for always joining. Good morning, Anna Brasher on ABS television. We start with the press review. All right, good to have you on Press Review. On Press Review this morning, we've been joined by AGK Ono Chuku, a public affairs analyst, to help us analyze the papers. Good morning and welcome, AGK. Good morning. Good morning, Danambra. The Bath Good morning. All right, my name is Nonye Mokoye, and we begin with uh, taking a look at some of the stories making their headlines in front of ABS website. Let's see stories from ABS website now and see how far we can run. Newy North TC chairman task workers on dedication to duty. Salute the rolls out palliatives to cushion effects of petrol subsidy removal in Anambra. Retreat for Anambra state government officials, legislators opens at Agolo. An Ocha council area. All right, these are three stories we'll be looking at from ABS website. What's your take? Especially, I know the one that will interest you more is the palliative. Oh, not exactly, because okay. uh, the palliative uh, thing, we've been, people have been waiting for it because uh, uh, for us and for most people, it's coming rather late uh, because people have. I've waited to hear the governor on palliative for quite a while. And I'll tell you why. Anambra's governor happened to be one of the most, um, perhaps the most educated governor in, this, in the nation now. There are, there are a few people of his class, intellectually speaking, from the academic background, maybe himself and Babaga Nazulum or Bruno, that among maybe people who are in the professorial cadre, who are governors. And then he happens to also be coming from, from an economic background. So people expected that. Uh, he should begin before everybody because he should understand this thing more than the average governor who is a politician who, who may be joining politics from somewhere. But then, never later than, uh, than never, we we'll thank the governor for the set of policies he's rolling out. And then let's believe that uh, these things get to who we should get to because at the end of the day, what we call palliative is not what government has approved. It is what the people get at the end of the day. That, that's the basis for the measurement. For instance, the president has said, we'll give every state five, five billion. And then we went ahead to give them two, two, and say, okay, I'll take two, I'm going to give you three. Now, for us, that is not the palliative. That is what the government has proposed as palliative. The palliative is, at the end of the day, what does the woman in the village get? It is at that point we can say palliative has happened. So for me now, palliative has not happened. Palliative has been proposed, okay. but has not happened until the mama in the village says, I got a bag of rice, see it here. I got 10,000, see it here. And then we can do the summation of what the people in the village, these people got versus what was approved and see what disappeared along the line. <laughs> and we're in Nigeria now. <laughs> so that, that is what, so it is at this point we can begin to say, okay, palliatives, have truly really happened. That's one. Number two, these palliatives are some people say, oh, we'll give you so so and so thing between now and December. This, this, this. Now, does it mean that by January the fuel pump goes back to the old one? So it's like it's a model. I'm going to put on a junction. It's about zero, okay? That's what you said to me. So you say to people, okay, I'm going to give you 1,000 naira from now to maybe next week. Mm. Okay, so the week after, you fend for yourself. You fend for yourself. So, government removes 
subsidy permanently and then proposes a three months intervention mm. for a permanent problem mm. how do you respond to it you know uh, you know before uh, as we speak yeah. you know a lot of people from so many quarters mm. have been criticizing this palliative thing of course we know that in everything there must be criticism of course you know uh, some people were of the opinion that Instead of sharing this money, why don't we, you know, use the money to fix our refineries and get things running so that uh, it's going to be a lasting solution look, to look, the look, problem at look, hand? That's what, that's, what, that's what I was alluding to. Look at mm. it. Government says we are removing subsidy. And we are removing it permanently. Going forward next year, next two years, next three years, next five years, next ten years, for, there will be no subsidy. Forever there's no, no subsidy. Mm. So what are you doing to solve a problem a permanent problem. You say I'm proposing a three months cash transfer. So as when you give me ten thousand now, give it to me next week, next month, maybe we up to December. By January, inflation is rising. You know, I I, I just so, so how does it how solve how, how the I problem? wish some of our leaders we go to shops themselves and see no. the prices of uh, things at the market. They live free life. They don't go. Uh, I, I say how I wish. An average how I president, wish they senator, go. governor, deputy governor, whoever, government funds their life. Uh, how I wish they will walk into and some also, malls. That's, you know? why, that's why this palliative thing does not excite me because I know it does not solve the problem. Now, palliative is not meant to be for me. I'm not against the issue of good people. Cash. It's not really a bad idea, but what do you put in the economy permanently to solve a permanent change you have created? Because this, this is a permanent change. Transport cost is not coming down. Food prices are not coming down. Nothing in the economy is going to change by January and return back to what it was before. Mm. And so if you say, I'm giving people something to take, maybe a bag of rice or two bags of rice, and they eat it between now and November. So by January... The bag of rice is still rising in the market. What does he do? So I'm looking at it because yeah, this savings from subsidy is going to be perpetual saving. Okay. Right? So I mean, you're, you're saving, uh, the president said you're saving 400 billion naira a month. So yes, you save it in, 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 in June, save it in July, save it in August, save it in September, save it in October, till December, till next year. This, you're saving this money month in, month out. Forward. And then you have a three months intervention. Mm. That's fraud. All right, uh, let's run because if we continue, we won't go here. If we talk, continue to talk about the subsidy and the package that was actually released yesterday by the governor, but we pray that it gets to the right people. The people that actually needed the palliative should get it. Let's see the first paper for review this morning. The Daily Sun newspaper lets his stories making their headlines in front of the Daily Sun newspaper. As Tinubu inaugurates cabinet, Wiki reveals how PDP governors recommended 10 ministers. We have writers there. Uh, president asks uh, appointees to serve with integrity, dignity, deliver on promises. FCT minister talks tough, vows to restore Abuja master plan, demolish illegal structures. Omahe will not disappoint me through I am speaking. Nigeria broke, broke, declares J.P. Morgan, says net forex reserves estimated at $3.7 billion. Uh, Mba plans construction rehabilitation of 81 roads in Enugu to provide mass transit buses. FG commands NDDC on budget process Gunmen kill livestock guard commander in Benue. Youths won't be patient when resources are being looted. CSOs won federal government. Uh, we also have Obi denies report of coalition with... Uh, okay, this story didn't, is not complete here. Okay, we can see in front of that paper the picture of uh, the president and uh, 
uh, Yesu Nwike uh, in a handshake there. Okay, let's look at that story. Because yesterday the, the video was just trending on the social media where Wike was actually talking to me. In fact, I was watching the woman very close to Wike. <laughs> the way the woman was laughing, you know. Yeah. And when the woman laughs, Wike will say, it is true. <laughs> it is true. So, well, well but let's talk about this, uh, the whole... Uh, a ministerial uh, uh, swearing in yesterday. Okay. Let me be clear. Mm. Ashwa Jibala Metinubu is not a very popular president after today. Perhaps um, you know, there's something they call approval rating in the US. Perhaps this government has the lowest approval rating ever in history. In Nigeria's history. Winning the least number of states ever, mm. ever won by any president in Nigeria's history. In fact, being touted not to have won mm. in some quarters. In fact, those who didn't want him to win are in, uh, are in majority. Because if you tie up the votes of those who voted for other candidates mm. versus his own, he, he, he's a president from the minority based on statistics mm. as of today. Because if you got 8 million votes, someone else got 6 points, the other person got 6 points. So there are at least, out of the 21st something people that want to vote, the larger number don't want you. No, that's the point. Now, but be that away, I think the ministerial, uh, the minister was responding yesterday, is a good thing. See, early, let's not carry the, the man and throw him away. Mm. I took time to to listen to the ministers, their citations, all mm. of that, and I see a strong balance of the young and the old. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of young people in that cabinet. Very young guys in that cabinet mm -hmm. doing sensitive things. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a balance of former governors. Because the governors are probably people that understand the country. Because they have, they have, they have done it over time. So I'm seeing governors like uh, from uh, Lalong, I'm seeing uh, Matawale, I'm seeing Yesonwike, I'm seeing uh, Boegoyetola, I've seen Omahe, from, from the north, from the south. Mm. So from, 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 from the south, Omahe is there, uh, uh, Boegoyetola is there, Wike is there, from the north, Lalong is there, Baduri is there, uh, Matawale is there, mm. Gaedami is there. So across every geopolitical zone, there's a former governor. It brings a balance to that system. Mm -hmm. Round, there's you know, that's one from the southwest, former governor, from the south south, from the southeast, from the north central. across. There are young people that's fair good gender, gender balance mm -hmm. in that cabinet. So for me, that cabinet is a fine one. Mm -hmm. Then you can see the way he restructured some things in that cabinet. Uh, Separated youth from sports, mm -hmm. put up the issue of uh, marine and blue economy. Mm -hmm. So that cabinet, for me, it's thick. It's more inspiring than Bahari's cabinet. And what do you say about the life pension of former governors that are still there? We'll come there. Because Nigerians are crying foul. We'll come there. Listen. I don't think it is the job of the president mm. to do that. I'm not saying he shouldn't stop that. Mm. But there is a commission mm. that is saddled with the job of deciding who gets what, when, and how. As far as it concerns this and pensions and all that, that commission to, should do their job. That's one. Then, talking about the man of the show, Ezo <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, I like Wike. Most people don't like Wike. Mm. They believe, oh, he didn't do that, he didn't do this. No, you, you, we, you we, see, we, people we, started hating him after the election. Yeah, I, that I, is one I, I, Exactly. Yes. Said, because we, but, before then, he yeah, was, yes. you know, he most, was most, in most, the good book of most because, Nigerians. Because of where he stood during the election. Mm. Keep oh, that and a, what he did. He, well, I don't know what he did. But <laughs> where he stood, that's what I'm sure of during the election. Mm -hmm. But take that away. That is his political persuasion. I look at people on two perspectives. Mm. One your political pers uh, uh, persuasion to your productivity. Listen, here in the Southeast, we don't have, we don't like, most people don't like APC governors. Mm. We don't like APC people. But David Domahi of Ebony State remains one of the Southeastern's best governors ever. If you are looking at it from the point of infrastructure, mm. he 
hate him or love him. Dave Omahe remains one of the best governors in recent time. Looking at the kind of the money available to a boy state mm. and what he was able to put on ground in 30 years. The guy is a star governor. Am I a PC man? No. Am I planning to be? No. For now. For now. <laughs> but I will not say that Dave Omahe didn't perform. Mm. I will say such a thing. That aside, yes, a week, eh? I don't like where he stands. I wish he was standing somewhere else. Mm. But if you say we can start a performer, you're joking. So you believe in what he said he's going to carry out as said? Listen, if you have built anywhere you shouldn't build it, it will go down. We can will not send you. This is the truth. The guy is stubborn. Mm. <laughs> All right, let's 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 believe that they will work do the work according to uh, what the papers are saying this morning and according to what the president told them that they should serve with integrity, dignity and deliver on promises. And sometimes we begin to look at the word dignity. What does it actually mean? Well, that would be a topic for another day. Uh, let, 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 let me tell you what it means. <laughs> It's a, it's a political statement. In the context of Nigeria yeah, it's, and it's, what, it's, what it's, has it's, been it's, going on. It's a political statement. Mm. Okay, let's go to the new national star. Let's see stories making their headlines in front of the new national star. As Wike Omahi Bagudi Badaru Lalong, 40 others take oaths of office. Tinubu charges ministers on renewed hope for Nigerians. New FCT minister threatens to step on toes with demolitions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way the new national star is putting the story. Manufacturers decry worsening tax burden on industries. Uh, uh, Edo local government polls, Obi lead LP campaign denies major talks with Atiko Kwang Kwaso. Unical to recall students' list sent to law school by Randy Professor. Uh, there is no external influence over decision on Niger. That's coming from ECOWAS. Uh, LCCI charges Tinubu to reduce Nigeria's debt cost by issuing more asset linked debt. We also have unbundled EFCC, restricted agency to investigations, Abakoba advises new AGF. World, Women's World Cup, Super, Super Falcons make FIFA top 10. IPO raises the alarm, says Supreme Court adjournment may deny cannot justice. After nine years, Army rescues another Chibok school girl. NNPP, APC Alliance, state party chairman move against Kwan Kwaso's uh, national Working Committee. Okay, that's the much you have in front of the new national star. So. Okay, so I think national star is still, is still uh, trending the, the ministerial... Uh, mm, well, let's, let's look at other stories now, there. Let's, let's move away from uh, that. For other now, stories. One, of us, one other important thing trending now is the, the drama in Niger. Mm. That has become a big issue. And let me tell you what I think. The Niger thing is a double-edged sword. One, ECOWAS is, is trying to, 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 you know, to make their point clear that we don't want cues here. To that extent, I get it. Number two, ECOWAS is not asking a question. Why are people, Africans, not celebrating democracy anymore? Hmm. Because if I was, I was in news last night, Young men were volunteering in the jail to enroll into the army to fight the ECOWAS when they come. Hmm. The, the stadium was full of young men. Hmm. So this military and, junta... And you remember they jubilated when the milita, president was ousted. This military junta hmm. has some strong element of support. Hmm. So question, what is wrong with Africa's democracy that people are not applauding it? That's, that's number two. Number three, what kind of government, what kind of election do we run in Africa? What gives the military options and chances and reasons to interfere in the democratic process? Mm. So there are fundamental things that ECOWAS is not dealing with. For instance, there's no ECOWAS chapter that I know of, maybe there is, on the integrity of elections. There is no chapter on people, you know, that this, this slogan has crept into our dictionary, democratic key. People finishing their first term, do a second term, then think out the constitution, get a third one, think out it again, get a fourth one. 
these things keep happening in Africa. Mm. So if I finish the first time as, as president, finish the second time and I should go, I say, you see, uh, we are trying to do something. Then I, I touch something and take a third one. Mm. And then it's, it's democracy. Mm. Then a military man comes, it's not. So let's begin to balance truth. Mm. There is something happening in Niger. Why the citizens are saying to hell with democracy? Hmm. It was for me to ask that question. What's going on here? Because we cannot say, oh, because the man in, in power is well in Agbada, therefore it's correct. See what I think. The, the, for me, what is the index of good government? Is HDI, Human Development Index. Hmm. How well are the people doing under a system of government? Not necessarily whether the man there wears a robe or wears a gada. But the reverse is the case. Let me give an instance. Libya under Gaddafi. Libya under Gaddafi and Libya today. Which one will you take? Hmm. United Kingdom still have a monarchy in place. Charles became king without an election. There's still, there's still a monarchy in place in the UK. Mm. They've not abolished it. That one, that one, a democracy. In places like uh, uh, the, the Arab world, that Arab Emirates, Dubai, Qatar, there are monarchs. Are you saying life in Dubai is bad? But they, they don't have that kind of. They don't go to the ballot every morning. Mm. But they have a system of government that reflects their culture refresh their, their, their religion, reflect their, their values in society, and serve the need of the people. Works for them. Works for them. Give them a better life. Mm. Have African democracy given Africans a better life. In 2023, while Nigerians are suffering, saying we cannot feed, people are sharing token, sharing prayer point on national TV. Let me ask you a question. Do you really think that if somebody overthrows Nigeria's democracy today, people will go out and protest? Can you say so? These are, these are very difficult things to say when the people will cancel you. All right. I think uh, you're making a point, you know, and uh, I think leaders uh, watching should take a cue and see whether they will look into the fundamentals, look into the, <clears throat> the root cause of problems before going to tackle it. Let's see stories making their headlines in front of the Punch newspaper. The Punch newspaper this morning, Abuja land, FG may revoke land allocations, demolish, demolish uh, 6,000 building slums. Illegal buildings must go down. Wiki tells ministers, ambassadors, others. Slums in Nyanya, Apo, Idu, 27 others may be affected. Residents be beg minister. <coughs> and receive Tinubu warns ministers against ethnic politics, appointees, unveil agenda. Ondo teenager confesses taking part in over 40 robberies. I want to reunite with Boko Haram husband, uh -uh, Chibok girl. <laughs> Navy arrests 10 oil thieves with over 100 jerrycans. Board chairman MDs buy additional 145 billion naira bank shares. Government to revive a Jokuta steel. <coughs> Government to revive Ajokuta Steel, Omahe plans road inspection. FG may raise uh, $17 billion from oil asset sales. JP Morgan speaking. All right. <laughs> the issue of land in Abuja. Mm. See, uh, I'm coming from a, an environmental social safeguard background. And sometimes development comes at a cost. But that cost must not be the people. Development comes at a cost. cost. But that cost must not be the people. But before now, and I know that government, Let me when, when, when government wants to take over something, mm. they reassign another place for you to move so that you will be affected. Look, look, look at the problem. When mm. you do such policies, slums who live in the slums mostly below average people mm. right mm. the essence of governance should be what do you do for these people to climb out of the trenches mm. so if we say oh 
You guys live in the, in, 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 in the slum. You don't, you don't have a good house. You give me the proper job. We're going to demolish it. What happens? People who have money hmm. come in, buy up the area. Because they have the money to develop it and hmm. make it better. So then the people who are managing life there, hmm. who couldn't even afford a decent life there, you lose it to, entirely. To, to the streets. And so you have what you call development, quote unquote. Hmm. Because you now have new buildings owned by politicians, mm -hmm. owned by people in power, and then a large number of uh, the poor people get poorer. Mm -hmm. So for me, the index of, what, of this, how can government support these low-income people who maybe have a small land they bought with their small money? How can government support them to have a better life? So we can pull more people out of, out poverty. of poverty, not drive more people into, into poverty. poverty. Okay. Okay, the Daily Times, let's see stories making their headlines in front of the Daily Times. Deputy Speaker floats novel idea on road development in Nigeria. Uh, the, our step on toes, demolish buildings, no matter who owns them, wiki vows. Job scammers, jeep victims of 765 million naira in Delta, five napped. Increased allowances to your wives, AIG, tells the newly promoted police officers. <clears throat> Armed robbers kill retired core wife. Tinubu swears and ministers. Nyako loses at Adamawa election tribunal. Subsidy removal. Bielsa pays wage award to workers. And, um, okay, I can't really see that very well. Okay, the picture in front of the Mary Nkoli, now married to a Boko Haram fighter who is, um, okay, I can't see the pictures. It's like the, the lady that said he wants to reunite with his Boko Haram uh, husband. Okay, that's the picture we no, are no, seeing. Focus on that, focus on that, that picture. Mm. That's why, no, we are to say something about, about the eco thing and, and we, we left and went to something else. Okay. Nigeria is literally, quote-unquote, fighting a war. Hmm. The Nigerian military <laughs> is stretched. Now, this is a girl has captured maybe more, uh, close to five years ago or so. Hmm. And being held somewhere for on years. Nigerian soil, and for five years we can't find her. I get my point. Hmm. Meaning, there is a book around camp or village or whatever. That won't, nobody knows about. That exists in this nation. <laughs> We are close to 100 girls have been married to maybe 100 men or less and have a colony. And up to today, we have not found it. We have not dealt with it. Nigerians are hungry. People cannot buy food. And then we are raising up money and men to put boots on the ground in Niger. Do we have obligations to our neighbors? Yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, President Buhari, when he was in power, Built a railway for this Niger, mm. if you remember, this time Niger. Mm. Gave the money to buy Thanks. cars and lost and lost. I think there was also a pipeline also. Mm. When uh, Amichi, the Minister of uh, Transport, said, yeah, hey, we'll build a railway to Maradi mm. in Niger. We have been living for Niger. Mm -hmm. you know, no, joke apart, we have been, Niger had become Nigeria's 37 state. We have been living for Niger. Niger had been on our budget. Our, our, our financial wise, military wise, uh, economic wise. Mm. So, how long are we supposed to live for Niger? What I'm trying to say is this I'm not saying we should not think about democracy in Niger, but are we going to put our men on the line mm. for Niger? Okay, that's a, that's a big question there. Are we going to put let's, our men Let's the run line for Niger. want of time. We take a look at the Daily Independent and the Nation. We look at them together before we, we begin to wrap up because of our time. Daily Independent, telecom operators lose over 6 million subscribers in six months. Record 785 billion naira as capital expenditure in 2022. Uh, Tinibuto ministers prioritize nation's interest above states. Suspended Adamoa Reg petitions NBA over planned disciplinary action. Uh, Kanu governor receives youths protesting alleged attempt to 
bribe election tribunal. I chose Solid Mineral Ministry of Passion for it. Dele Alake says, uh, says uh, side oil, solid mineral is Nigeria's next growth factor. Fagbemi warns Justice Ministry staff against insubordination laxity. Itela pledges ministry will tap from sector's $1.5 trillion yearly worth. And Wiki vows to pull down illegal structures in Abuja. How FG will ensure stable, accessible power supply by Adelabu. And uh, on in front of the nation, newspaper, we have how we will implement uh, Tinubu's agenda by ministers. You can see their pictures on a handshake with the president in front of the nation newspaper. Nigeria's net foreign reserves at 3.7 billion dollars, says J.P. Morgan. What Fagbemi should do as AGF by Lego giants? FRSC. Okay, FIRS steps up plan to prevent tax evasion by firms. Ocean staff audit stored by Assembly's uh, action. We also take a, a look at the Guardian. Let's look at the Guardian. Operators unsettled over Tinubu's hold on Petroleum Ministry 2022 crude oil export. Okay, Nige uh, serve Nigeria, not regions or states. Tinubu charges. Nigeria's inflation it hits 28% uh, by year and JP Morgan projects. INEC and disturbing threats to November polls. And um, we came to step on to, okay, we've seen that severally. Uh, that's just about it, you know, the three papers we looked at this morning. Two things. Mm. Do, there, are, there, are, there are things called economic indicators. Okay. Let me tell you something. If you want to know if people's life is growing or dropping, you begin to look at small things they keep doing or stop doing. There's a headline there about telecom operators mm. losing customers. You know what it means? <laughs> it means that in the past six months, there are Nigerians who can't keep keeping an active phone line. Mm. Who life has dealt sugar mm. that they can't sustain a telephone? Or a hospital. Mm. That previous phone owners mm. either have lost the phone, couldn't replace it, mm. or have shut down. Because they can't, uh, they can't you know, mm, they can't fund the, the tariff for yeah, and what, exactly. or what no. so, because so, some of us we all, we probably cry if you put so, data today. So, so tomorrow most we start people, crying. People who still put data in their phone, mm. to start their phone, are people who can't do without it mm. Maybe because of the nature of their job, their job or whatever, whatever, whatever. But several people do not recharge their phones like they used to because they need to first of all eat go do. Mm. People put data. Several people. Okay. In fact, when do you see traffic in Aroma, in Aroma last? <laughs> okay, let's quickly take these two last papers <laughs> because of our time. Let's take the two papers, uh, the Vanguard and the Daily Trust. Let's see stories there before we wrap up the show. Tinubu to ministers, serve Nigeria, not regions or states. Uh, we also have gunmen abduct eight NYSC members on way to camp in Sokoto. How PDP governor sent 10 ministerial nominees to Tinubu a babies die as women deliver in toilets, says Benue IDP camp manager. Men in army uniform robbed, killed my aide, Senator Adeola Lament. Niger, we are more likely to use force. That's coming from ECOWAS. Abakobata's new AGF on criminal justice system. Now, the, finally, the Daily Trust newspapers. Stakeholders set agenda as ministers assume office. Uh, troop rescue another Chibo girl. Uh, oil prices rise above $80 per barrel in international markets. Man accused of killing brother's children remanded for 60 days. Multiple taxation, power, poor sales, top challenges of manufacturing. Man, JP Morgan, okay. Governorship poll, tension in Kanwa's tribunal reserves judgment. Niger crisis, 2 million children need humanitarian aid. That's coming from the UNICEF. All right, quickly, let's okay. run before we go. One thing I'll do. Mm. Stakeholders set agenda. 
as ministers as an office. Now, the government of tribunism yesterday, the government, the, the business of governance across sectors resumed yesterday. yesterday. The president was warning in May for mm -hmm. government Okay. So, what we do as the public or as a commentators is to set agenda for government across sectors. What are we expecting from here, mm -hmm. from here, from here, from here, from here? What are Nigeria's problems as of today? Mm -hmm. Financial, or rather economic, security. We are expecting the new Minister of Finance to do something about Nigeria's financial position. JP Morgan is saying we are broke. <laughs> so within the next six months, we want to see our financial position begin to change. I didn't say change. Begin to take a position to show that it is changing. To change it will not be very, will not be a wonder. And, and how do we know that? We begin to feel it. We begin you to know? see food prices drop, drop. at least by 1%. Okay. We begin to see whatever they want to do in the petroleum industry. They begin to do it, and this thing begins to drop at least from maybe 600 to 550. Okay. We begin to see uh, transport costs drop maybe from 200 naira, maybe to 150, and begin to stabilize. Some element of movement towards where it's important. We begin to see dollar drop by maybe 100 naira, so that things have not become all right, but there is a trajectory to show that, that things... Is. Are getting better okay we can go on and on and uh, nobody is actually talking about the new naira note anymore <laughs> well <laughs> all right <laughs> and all right that's the much you can take on the press review this morning would like to appreciate you so much edukeme anochuku for being here this morning thank you so much for your time thank you very much thank you all right and that's it on the press review for now we have more things coming up on good morning and i'm brush show this day